Eighth grade illustrative mathematics, unit six, lesson five. Describing trends in scatter plots. Right now, click that like button. I appreciate it. Problem number one. A, draw a line that you think is a good fit for this data. For this data, the inputs are horizontal values and the outputs are the vertical values. Just draw a line that goes right through the middle of all the data points. B. Use your line of fit to estimate what you would expect the output value to be when the input is 10. Remember, the inputs are the horizontal values, so when the input is 10, the output would be about 30. Problem number two from eighth grade unit six, lesson three. Here's a scatter plot that shows the most popular videos in a 10 year span. A. Use the scatter plot to estimate the number of views for the most popular video in this 10 year span. To find the most popular video, we'd have to find the video that has the most views. The vertical axis represents the views in billions. Let's find the point that's at the highest part of the graph. That's not quite 3 billion views, it's just about 2.8 billion views. B. Estimate when the fourth most popular video was released. The fourth most popular video will be the point that's fourth from the top. The release dates are shown on the horizontal axis along the bottom. So scroll straight down and you'll see that the point falls just before January 1st, 2015. So I would say that the release date was somewhere in late December, 2014. Problem number three from eighth grade unit five, lesson eight. A recipe for bread calls for one teaspoon of yeast for every two cups of flour. A, name two quantities in this situation that are in a functional relationship. The amount of yeast and the amount of flour are in a functional relationship. B, write an equation that represents the function. Let's start with a chart with yeast on one side and flour on the other. The information tells us for every one teaspoon of yeast, there's two cups of flour. Y represents yeast and F represents flour. Since one is half of two and Y equals one and F equals two, we can say that Y equals half of F. That's if the amount of yeast is treated as a function of the amount of flour. If the amount of flour is treated as a function of the amount of yeast, then the equation is F equals 2Y. C. Draw the graph of the function. Label at least two points with input-output pairs. The F axis across the bottom, I'm counting in twos for the cups of flour, two, four, six, eight, and 10. Each green mark represents two cups of flour. You don't have to count by twos, that's just how I set it up. The vertical axis is labeled T for teaspoons of yeast, and I counted by ones. Each mark represents one tablespoon of yeast. One point on the line for this graph is at four and two, meaning for every four cups of flour, there's two teaspoons of yeast. Another point on this line is located at eight and four, meaning for every eight cups of flour, there's four teaspoons of yeast. Here's a different graph. This time, the horizontal axis is the t-axis, teaspoons of yeast, counting by ones, and the vertical axis, I have the cups of flour. And again, I counted for the cups of flour in twos. For this graph, I have a point located at two and four, meaning for every two teaspoons of yeast, there's four cups of flour. And my second point is located at four and eight, meaning for every four teaspoons of yeast, there's eight cups of flour. I drew this graph by hand so it's not perfect, but I can start at the origin and draw a line right through the two points to make my line. Now you can watch the next lesson, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.